exotic sports car, McCaffrey has taken the Shanahan offense to another level and is consistently in the conversation for NFL MVP. A talent on the level of McCaffrey is one a team would give a lot of capital up for. So why did seven teams pass on him in the 2017 NFL Draft? That's what we're here to discuss. In this video, we'll be going over all seven players taken ahead of Christian McCaffrey in the 2017 NFL Draft and how their careers have panned out so far, starting with the first overall pick by the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett. Coming into the 2017 draft, Miles Garrett was far and away the best player in the country. It was never up for debate who the first overall pick was going to be. Garrett was a five-star prospect in high school, collecting offers from major schools like Oklahoma, Florida State, and Arkansas. But the Texas native decided to stay close to home, committing to Texas A&M. Garrett would start as a true freshman, recording an absurd 11 sacks in 11 games and 12 and a half tackles for loss. It was clear this guy was special from the jump. His sophomore season would be even better, recording 11 and a half sacks and 19 and a half tackles for loss in 13 games. At this point, Garrett was already being mocked as the best player in the 2017 draft, and that would continue to be the case. Garrett's junior season would consist of eight and a half sacks and 15 tackles for loss in only 10 games, cementing him as the clear-cut favorite to be the number one overall pick. The Cleveland Browns had been coming off of a historically bad 1-15 in season in 2016, so it was clear they needed a franchise-altering talent. Luckily for them, Garrett was available that year. Garrett would get injured in the preseason before his rookie season, causing him to miss the first four games of his career and leading to the only season he's had in the NFL with single-digit sacks with seven sacks in 11 games. Since then, Garrett has been an unstoppable force on the edge, making an all-pro team in every single season since his rookie year, excluding his 2019 season, which got cut short due to a suspension. Miles Garrett is an absolute game-changer, a franchise-changer, you name it. Regardless of how good Christian McCaffrey is, he was well worth the first overall pick. The next pick was a very, very controversial one at the time, and it still continues to be. The Chicago Bears traded up one pick to select quarterback Mitchell Trubisky, the reason this pick was so controversial is because mostly everybody had scouted Trubisky as the third best quarterback in the draft, with Deshaun Watson and a guy out of Texas Tech you might have heard of, Patrick Mahomes, popularly mocked ahead of him. Trubisky never seemed special at North Carolina, yet he was taken over two of the most exciting college quarterbacks of all time. Those mocks would turn out to be right. Despite making the Pro Bowl in 2018 after a 3,223-yard, 24-touchdown, 12-interception season where he led the Bears to the playoffs, Trubisky has had a well-below-average career. Trubisky would be the Bears' full-time starter until 2020, where in Week 3, former Super Bowl MVP Nick Foles would see some game action playing well enough to secure the starting quarterback role. That would last until Week 11, when Trubisky would regain the starter position. The 2020 Bears were a mess despite the 8-8 finish. After this season, the Bears would take quarterback Justin Fields in the first round of the 2021 draft, ultimately moving on from Trubisky. Trubisky would land in Buffalo, backing up Josh Allen for a season, before signing a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2022 to compete for the starting quarterback role, a role he would lose to rookie Kenny Pickett. Trubisky played in Pittsburgh again in 2023, and his future as a starter is bleak. Pick three would be defensive lineman Solomon Thomas being taken by the San Francisco 49ers. Thomas had a short but fantastic career as a Stanford Cardinal, where he was even teammates with McCaffrey. In his two seasons at Stanford, Thomas racked up 12 sacks and 24 and a half tackles for loss, completely earning the right to be taken third overall. However, Thomas would be a complete bust. In his first two seasons as a Niner, Thomas would only record four sacks, completely losing his starting job by his third season. After two more seasons in which he would barely play, his rookie contract expired in San Francisco. Thomas would proceed to sign a one-year deal with the Las Vegas Raiders, where he would spend the entire season as a backup, a role he continued as a member of the New York Jets. With the fourth pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected running back Leonard Fournette. Fournette was the most sought-after running back in his high school class, ultimately committing to play at LSU, 
where he would become a college football legend. Fournette would have a good true freshman season, rushing for 1,034 yards and 10 touchdowns, but what really cemented Fournette as a top pick was his sophomore season. In 2015, Fournette would shatter the LSU school record with 1,953 rushing yards, scoring a whopping 22 touchdowns on top of it. The crazy part is, Fournette still finished behind Christian McCaffrey in Heisman voting that season. After a short junior season, Fournette would declare for the NFL draft, projected to be the first running back taken, which is exactly what happened. Fournette's rookie year in Jacksonville would see him rush for over 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns, proving that he's a force to be reckoned with in the NFL just as much as he was in college. However, injuries would start to be a factor, causing him to miss half of his second season. Fournette would be healthy for the 2019 season, rushing for over 1,000 yards once again before being traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Fournette's career in Tampa Bay would begin with him backing up Ronald Jones before taking over late in the season and ultimately playing a huge role in their Super Bowl championship run, earning the nickname Playoff Lenny. Fournette would follow this run with two average seasons in Tampa Bay before being cut prior to the 2023 season. Fournette currently serves as a backup running back for the Buffalo Bills, rarely seeing playing time. I'm sure the Jaguars wish they would have taken McCaffrey. The fifth overall pick belonged to the Tennessee Titans, who would take wide receiver Corey Davis. Davis, much like almost everybody in this top five, had an excellent college career. Davis is happening at Western Michigan. The Titans took a big risk by taking a receiver from a non-Power 5 school, which wouldn't pay off for them. Davis's best season in Tennessee would come in 2020, where he would catch 65 passes for 984 yards and five touchdowns, playing second fiddle to up-and-coming superstar receiver A.J. Brown. After this season, his value was as high as it ever was and Davis would sign a three-year, $37.5 million contract with the New York Jets. Davis would never live up to that contract, playing two average seasons in New York before shockingly and suddenly announcing his retirement before the 2023 season. An odd back-and-forth career resulting in yet another bust drafted ahead of McCaffrey. With the sixth overall pick, the New York Jets would draft safety Jamal Adams. Adams is an interesting story because a few years into his career, Adams would be arguably the best safety in the entire NFL, making three all-pro teams in his first four seasons. But injuries and his mouth have sadly derailed his career. Adams has also become a straight-up meme, being labeled as Blitzboy by fans due to his ridiculously high sack numbers from the safety position. In his third season, Adams would rack up six and a half sacks, which is high for a safety. But after a trade to Seattle prior to the 2020 season, he would absolutely shatter that number, getting nine and a half sacks in his first season as a Seahawk. The interceptions were never there, but a combination of his pass rush ability and his coverage ability had Adams at the top of many safety rankings. However, as previously mentioned, Adams has dealt with major injury issues playing only 10 combined games in 2022 and 2023. When healthy, Adams is great, but the question is, can he stay healthy for a full season like he used to as a Jet? The last pick before CMC was pick number seven, which would have wide receiver Mike Williams heading to the Los Angeles Chargers. Mike Williams is an absolute jump ball machine. If you throw it up to him in single coverage, he's most likely coming down with it, making him a major threat for opposing secondaries. However, much like Jamal Adams, Williams has dealt with injuries throughout his career, including a complete ACL tear in only his third game in 2023, which very well may have been his last ever game as a Charger. A healthy Mike Williams has been a problem, especially alongside Keenan Allen, but if he moves teams and still deals with injuries, then his career may be on a downward slope. We've made it to pick number eight, where the Carolina Panthers would take the best running back of his era. Kristen McCaffrey. Even though his career in Carolina is over, they surely don't regret this pick. How would you redraft the 2017 first round? Does McCaffrey go first overall? Let us know in the comments. FYI, Patrick Mahomes was still on the board through all these picks. Though McCaffrey has been dominant, most of these teams are all kicking themselves for taking who they did. If Christian McCaffrey was an exotic sports car, what type of car would you say he is? Tell us in the comments. We all know that Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy are huge CMC lovers, and they are built to compete for Lombardis for years to come.
Since you made it this far, would you become a subscriber to our channel? You'd be a tremendous helper by doing so. We're working hard to bring you stories of the game's best stories. As always, thank you for watching The Halftime Show.